Right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's meeting of the Cabinet. We will start off the agenda with the evacuation procedure, and as far as I'm aware, every single person in the room does know the evacuation procedure by now, so I don't propose to recite it verbatim, save to say, just follow us out the doors if uh, the alarm does go off. Um, item two is to receive apologies. Um, I have two apologies. Councillor Golby is currently stuck in traffic and Councillor Markham is um, away, so we have their apologies. Item number three is declarations of interest. Does any cabinet member have any other items which aren't already published in the agenda? No, in which case we'll take those as accepted. Turning to item four, which is the minutes of the last meeting. Is everyone happy that I sign them off as a true and accurate record? Thank you. That moves us on to agenda item number five, which is public consultation. I have not been made aware of any uh, members of the public who wish to speak. And of course, there are non-cabinet members present who will be invited as per usual if they wish to. Um, given that the portfolio holder is um, detained in traffic, I'm going to take some of the other items first with permission of cabinet. So I'm going to go to agenda item number seven first, which is the vehicle tyre replacement contract in the absence of Councillor Markham, I believe Councillor Guttridge is going to move that. Thank you, Chair. The report is, the recommendations is to approve the re-procurement of Fleet Vehicle Tire Management Framework Agreement, which ends in October 2023, and to grant delegated authority to the Strategic Director Public Services and the Strategic Director of Finance and Government to award the pro procurement process and enter into a framework agreement with a single supplier for the provision of fleet vehicle tyre management goods and associated services. I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any at a later date, but I propose that, sir. Okay, thank you, Councillor Guttridge, and I will second that from the Chair. Any non-Cabinet member? Councillor Condacore. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's very interesting to look at the limited data in this report because, uh, particularly on page 22, it's got the amount we spent. You can really see how much lower our, our mileage was during COVID. Um, but I, I, I think we do need to look, ask questions about our vehicle fleet becoming spending what will be £70,000 a year on tyres. Um, yeah, it's not an insignificant amount of money considering the things we, we, we cut and are looking at. And also some of our vehicles have pathetically low mileages. When I looked at the MOTs uh, of our seven-year-old vehicles, some of them have only done 14, 18,000 miles. So uh, I, I do think we need to ask, have we got too many vehicles? Uh, yeah, some of them are doing incredibly low mileage. Uh, and looking at one of the MOT um, things, uh, one of the vehicles has actually um, failed for having perished tyres because obviously it's not moved enough. Um, and obviously there's also the issue of keeping an eye on Ford and other things. So I, I do hope we have a good look at tyres because £170,000 is not an insignificant amount. Uh, and a question, if I may, uh, um, what's happening with vehicles and NABSEL? Because we've got this budget here. Does this also include the tyres and the framework for NABSEL? Because NABSEL are doing an ever-increasing amount of our work, uh, which means obviously they either have their own vehicles or we're, we're moving vehicles over to them. And if, if NABSEL are doing work, then actually this amount of vans and tyres should actually go down on our, our funds and actually effectively go up on NABSEL. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Condacore. Um, Director Hollis, is there anything you want to come back in on? Thank you, Chair. D just to update, that's, my understanding is it's both for the HRA and the general fund vehicles. It doesn't include NABSEL. Um, they're external, but it's to um, ensure the vehicles are roadworthy as per the DVA, DVLA and the o, o licence. So we need to ensure we've got an audit trail and a reference for any any of those vehicles. So um, in, in terms of the um, 
value that's what we're anticipating um, previously and the framework will then when we go out to contract will provide the updated figures chair thank you okay thank you director hollis and in the event that nabsal were ever to want to access it it would be a recharge anyway yeah. as per standard procedure with anything that nabsal access from the council such as financial support insurances etc so that would be recharged and be an income uh, to the council in that event any cabinet member wish to come in mm. councillor gutter do you wish to come back thank you chair i look at tires and think they're a safety feature we need we need the tires we need them to be legal we need them to be correct if one of our dust carts have a puncture we need to have a tire manufacturer to come out and repair them i believe that the said member opposite is moaning about we've got too many dust carts well i think we haven't got enough i think we need to get the dust cart and also we need to check our lorries and dust carts regularly for the operation licenses i've had instances when I, in my previous life where we check our lorries every six weeks and i find that it's the safety of our residents and our staff that we must check our tires i know if i can harp on a little bit about hgvs hgv driver in the morning the first thing he does is check round the vehicle lights indicators and checks his tires checks the water and then sets off on his journey i for one want to make sure that our staff are safe and sound and our residents are safe and sound and i think tires are paramount thank you Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Guthridge, and, and Councillor Golby has just arrived as well, but you, you have read the paperwork in advance, haven't you, sir? Um, in which case, if there are no other speakers um, from Cabinet, I'll move to the recommendations as printed. All those in favour, please show. That is carried. Thank you very much. Councillor Golby, are you happy to take your item now, or do you want me to give you a bit more of a breather and take a... Yeah, OK. We'll move on to... Um, Agenda item number nine, then, um, which is any other items. I've only been made aware of one other item, which is the local development scheme. So I will move to Councillor Smith to introduce that report. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, apologies for the late addition of this item to the agenda. However, in order to meet an accelerated timetable through a series of scheduled meetings, it was necessary to bring this item here tonight. The Local Development Scheme, or LDS as I'll refer to it, is a project plan uh, that sets out the timetable for the development plan documents that form the basis of the Council's Local Development Plan. And they're being revised as part of the Borough Plan Review. The LDS has two main functions. It identifies the current planning policy documents that are being applied in the borough. And it provides a three-year project plan that outlines what the replacement planning policy documents will be and the different stages of their preparation. The LDS also refers to the Gypsy and Traveller site allocations development plan document, which is a fantastic piece of work if I might say so, by the planning officers. And for the first time, that'll demonstrate we've satisfied the need for traveller sites across our borough. And as a result of having no unmet need, we should be able to challenge inappropriate gypsy and traveller sites should they occur. This document is currently being examined by the inspectorate and requires some main modifications. So it'll require further public consultation and this timetable therefore also needs to be updated and is included with the LDS. Cabinet may recall extending timelines on several previous occasions due to issues arising mainly from the delay in the production of the sub-regional 
Housing and Economic Development Needs Assessment, and more recently, the delay in the Strategic Transport Assessment and other items required from third parties that are outside of our control. It's in everyone's interest that we not only deliver a first-class borough plan, but deliver it as fast as possible. So to that end, I'm taking every opportunity available to bring forward the submission of our revised plan to the inspectorate for consideration at the earliest date within this calendar year. I'd also like to highlight, highlight the excellent work delivered by the planning policy team to make this review of the plan possible in record time. You may recollect the current plan was 10 years in the making. Our 2021 manifesto promised to start an immediate review of the borough plan, and that was something we delivered on. And now, just two years later, we're closing in on the submission of the revised plan to the inspectorate by the end of this year. That is an amazing feat, and I'd like to publicly thank my team for their continued high standard of work to meet the challenges I constantly set them time-wise. You'll see in Appendix A at item 3.3, Table 1 shows the proposed timeline for the Borough Plan Review, and at item 3.5, Table 2, the proposed timeline for the Gypsy and Traveller site allocations. The recommendations are to note the report and recommend to Council the amendments to the LDS be approved and amended, and the LDS be adopted. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith, and I will second that from the Chair. Um, any non-Cabinet member wish to speak? Councillor Condacore. Um, it's a bit of rewriting history to talk about accelerating plans, because actually we've lost a year, because obviously budget constraints meant that we actually decided to do it in three years rather than two. The original date on the table was, I think, February 2023, which is this year. We, uh, we should have had our plan done and adopted. A and also, we are not getting a first-rate new borough plan. We're getting a borough plan that rolls the timescale on by eight years, um, so it'll end in 2039, and it will add two to 4,000 extra homes, depending on how it carries over the numbers from the old plan. So it's more housing. It's marginally better on a few issues, but it's not a first-class borough plan. A and one of the problems we'll have is that the next administration may not want to adopt what you've created, particularly if it's very much not got sustainable transport, solar panels on houses, ecologically improving our borough, more green spaces, uh, and a more sustainable borough. So um, we may be, be producing a plan um, for J June 2024 that is actually something we wouldn't want to adopt because it would actually build on more countryside, not have the ground brownfield first policies, uh, and effectively just be a slightly slower version, marginally better than Labour's plan, but fundamentally not a, a, a massive change. And we also have the issue of the planning applications that are going through in the next couple of months, where actually a lot of the stuff that we claim to want to stop will actually be approved, and we can do nothing about it because we haven't got the budget to turn down planning applications. So uh, I, I'm very disappointed. Uh, and on the risk analysis, it talks about political buy-in. I think now we should be talking about a plan that might be acceptable to future administrations, that is far greener, far more sustainable, and is based on far more realistic housing numbers. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Condacore. As for future um, administrations, it's certainly the plan of this administration that we will uh, succeed at the next election and keep delivering for the residents. And I want to actually tackle head-on some of the um, misconceptions, and I'm putting that um, in parliamentary language, um, because if I um, was to do otherwise, I might get into trouble. But I have to say, I think he has a brass neck to pontificate on the borough plan. Let us not forget, not four months ago, in this chamber, Councillor Condacor sat where he is now and proposed removing the almost the entire budget set aside for reviewing the borough plan. How on earth, how does he dare to have a go at anyone else for actually reviewing the borough plan when under his plans 
there would be no review of the borough plan and we would be stuck with Labour's flawed plan that we inherited. So let us tackle some of the um, deliberate mistruths that uh, Councillor Condacore um, has just gone through. The budget. We have had to work to a budget because we, we will not, and, and we have said this all the way along, set an illegal budget. We have to set a balanced budget. Reports cost money, and that is what we've had to deliver. Again, if we'd have followed his plan, there would have been no uh, bu uh, money to deliver the um, reports needed for the review. The timeline. He knows full well that this is an accelerated timeline because we inherited a disastrous situation where it came to the borough plan review. I well remember reading the uh, inspector's report in 2019 where he just about passed the last borough plan where he said quite categorically that the review needed to take place by 2021 because a lot of the data and assumptions within the borough plan was at the extreme limit of its um, usefulness uh, and, being, and its validity. In the remaining two years of the previous Labour administration, they did nothing towards the borough plan review. We had to inherit it from, a, from an absolute standing stop and we have accelerated it and wound it up. And within months of us taking control of this authority, back in 2021, we had our first consultation round. And we're about to now go through, if this goes, is accepted, a second consultation round. It is completely preposterous for Councillor Condacor to sit there and say that um, we have delayed this. We have not. We have picked it up following Labour's misdeeds. In terms of the timescales, we have accelerated this as far as we possibly can um, so that we can get it to the inspector uh, this side of the new year. And the sooner we can do that, I think everyone would actually welcome that. And adding extra homes, he says that we are increasing basically Labour's uh, housing target. This is rubbish. We have actually decreased the tra tra trajectory, going from over 800 dwellings per annum to 500 and 45 dwellings per annum. Thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. Now, yes, it does add eight years onto a plan because we are required to have a plan. Is Councillor Condacore seriously going to go around say, telling everyone, because this is the implication of, of his statement, that from 2031 to 2039, no houses are going to be built at all in the borough? No, we can't do that. It is not an option. And the population keeps increasing. Is he suggesting that local residents, local young people in this borough will be unable to get their foot on the housing ladder, which is already challenging enough, um, and I speak from experience on that, and I know other members of Cabinet um, share the same view. We ha do need houses. It's about the right number in the right place with the right um, services to go with it. And during 2031 to 39, we will be required to uh, still have um, a housing policy. And actually, if we didn't uh, do this review, the assumption would be that we would carry on during 2031 to 39, or until we were to get a review in place, it would carry on at over 820 dwellings uh, during that period. Instead, we've got it down to 545. Again, the brass neck of the man is galling. No, you know the rules, Councillor Condacor, you don't. What I've just said is completely true. Um, so the, I want to put it on record that Councillor Smith and his team have done an absolutely fantastic job in picking up the absolute mess that we picked up in May 21 to get it to a situation where we can now present it to the inspector and actually start to make a difference for residents. Councillor Smith, I see you want to come back in. Yeah, just a couple of points. I need to correct you, actually. <laughs> um, you mentioned two consultation rounds. We've actually done three when this one's done. We did one we didn't have to do because we needed that public response so we could adjust the plan to reflect their opinions. Um, so that preferred options, non-statutory consultation was really important. Uh, this plan is a good plan. There is zero green belt in there, something which the previous administration didn't do. 
You know full well that the timeline hasn't been stretched because of the planning department. It's been stretched be because we were waiting for our partners to uh, complete the HEDNA and, and the um, strategic transport assessment, things that are totally out of our control. And, and, and the chair is right, housing numbers, uh, currently we need to deliver about a thousand a year because of under delivery. That is going to almost halve under our plan. So uh, I, I can't add much more to what's already been said, but uh, you're welcome to your opinions, but they're totally wrong. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Smith, and thank you for reminding me about the extra consultation. I'd forgotten about that, but it just goes to prove that, yet again, we did something different to the previous administration and that we've consulted more than we were legally required to do. Councillor Goldby. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it, we need to combat the misinformation that is being pumped out about this, and, and, it, and it is being pumped out about this. Um, we've got a... a, a Gypsy and Traveller site allocation that, that's never been in play. That was because of this administration, and th the team got on that straight away. Um, I mean, Councillor Kandaka wants, wants it done like that, but then wants it not done because the next administration might want to do something. Well, do we, do we stop now, and then he moans about that, or do we carry on? Well, well we're carrying on, because that's what we need to do. Yeah. Um, if the next administration is a different administration, then so be it. That's democracy. They will have their own time and their own space to do whatever it is that they want, but I, I would sincerely hope that for the good of this borough, it isn't like that, and it is us carrying on business as usual. Um, I, I don't particularly want to get into the uh, ins and outs of what other people might want in future years. I mean, do we get Mystic Meg to write, write stuff? I don't know. I mean, what, what, just ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. But what I do also want to point out is in here, we've got the Arbury uh, supplementary planning document that was also under our watch, which is also a major plus point for my area, certainly. Uh, and, and I'm really pleased about that. It sets a standard of delivery um, uh, in a design code that actually suits the residents. So uh, I'm really pleased about that, and I think that, that the timelines are actually commendable. Um, I, just, I just, you know, when you just think, why, why, why can't we just accept something that's good? And if we're talking about overstretched planning departments, perhaps you want to hark back to yourself when you try to call every single planning application in to the planning department and absolutely clog up the system. How do you think that helps people's workload? It doesn't, and we've had to change things uh, from a strategic point of view because of that. And you can't sit in your ivory tower and then do things like that. You just can't do it. So there's been a lot of staff effort gone into this, and they have to be commended for that because there has been pressure put on, and we've done in two years what other people didn't do in 10. Yeah. So it is very good. And Richard, I... I would like you to take the thanks back to the staff on my behalf, certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Goldby. Any other member of Cabinet before we go to the recommendations? No, in which case can we have a show of hands in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Um, that moves us back slightly <laughs> to agenda item number six, which is the serious violence duty. Councillor Goldby, are you ready to present that? Thank you, and I do apologise for the, uh, the delay that I experienced getting here today. I'll speak to you about that afterwards. Um, so the serious violence duty is something that is uh, a statutory thing that we have to undertake, and it is between us, the county, and the other districts and boroughs. Um, it's come down through a change in um, the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Act in 2022, so this is us getting our ducks in a row for that. And um, I'm not really going to go into it too much because it is quite a, a, a hefty document and I'm not sure if everybody will be um, fully availed of what it is. So I know that it's, it's there for people to review when they want. 
basically we are also going to be in receipt of some additional funding to help support everything that's going on we have identified that we need to expand our communities team which is uh, without you know it's, it's a given there's all sorts of things that we're doing at the moment that is really um, adding pressure to the community's team, but they're coping admirably with everything that's going on and with all the additional stuff as well, like the Knife Angel project. So we do recognise that there is an additional need in that team and it is going to be met. So we've already sorted that out before there are any criticisms. Um, we are going to take uh, a strategic needs assessment. We're going to um, link in with other districts and boroughs, but we have a specific view of our borough, which will be um, put forward when it comes to dealing with issues within our own patch. Other people have other issues that they want to focus on in their patch, and so be it. So this is quite a um, collegiate approach to local issues, uh, and I just want to... Um, put the agenda item forward for acceptance by the cabinet. Okay, thank you, Councillor Golby. Does that receive a seconder? Councillor Guthridge, thank you. Any non-cabinet member? Councillor Condacor. Um, I hope this has a, a, a good look through scrutiny as well, because there's so much to this. This is a big document, uh, and it obviously it covers the whole of Warwickshire, so the, the forward is, is very much saying how safe Warwickshire is, and that's a generalism, but obviously not everywhere. And uh, sadly, we had an attack yesterday in a Oston Road subway. So there's lots of issues going on. And this can't just be a report that sits on a, a shelf. We have to start doing something about the violence and the, the whole p social problems we've got. And so much actually does need funding. Yeah, we've cut the youth service many years ago, not us, obviously, but as a, as a country. Um, and we need to reverse a lot of that. But also looking at some of the detail, it's really fascinating on page 22 to see St Nicholas East, Wellington South West and Wellington North as three of the six lower super, air, lower super output areas um, which have got uh, an average risk score going up. We, we've built a lot of new housing with absolutely nothing for young people to do. We've built social housing which is clumped together and ignored our pe pepper potting rules um, and we've built places with not that community like we used to have you know, a lot of the estates have got absolutely no community um, venue there's issues with dogs there's issues with um, neighbors not getting on we've actually added to our problems by this new development just by the way it's done and how it's been dumped all in one area and there's so much work to do. So I do hope we have a look at this, this at scrutiny and I do hope we try and make a safer borough. And the other thing which particularly picks up on a lot of the um, things that happen when there is an incident is that, that there's this tendency of, sort of, well, don't go there, don't go through the subway, don't go to the car park. And effectively, we can actually end up making no-go areas and shrinking down uh, the area that has that natural surveillance of people using it. I'd like to reclaim the borough and actually try and have all the areas feel safer. And so much is about the environment. You look at the Oston Road Tunnel, half the lights don't work, it's covered in graffiti, it's a mess. We actually need to do some stuff to actually make the place look better. And I think in the past with some of these schemes, and it talks about the Boston scheme, um, a lot is about making places look like it's a place where you don't commit crime. The same with litter, all sorts of things. If you change the look of an area, what people do in that area changes. And it's the same with the new housing estates. I think we need to work a lot harder on them. And I think some of our problems is also the social landlords that don't really pick up the problems until they escalate and escalate. The Orbits and the Midland House, and our hearts and all these organisations, yeah, they're under-resourced. And actually, when they start having issues, it doesn't really get anything happen until someone burns down a house or covers it in graffiti or whatever. Yeah, we've got lots of problems. And yet, I hate having all these problems in Wellington because... It was a very, very low crime, very safe area. And unfortunately, things have not improved by just dumping a large amount of housing on without the stuff to actually create a community. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Condacor. Um, I don't think Weddington is quite like the Bronx in, in terms of crime and antisocial behaviour. Every area has issues with 
uh, crime and antisocial behaviour. I don't think anyone would, would deny that. It, it, it's an unfortunate fact of life um, that, that it happens. I would disagree with Councillor Condacore that all the new areas, and I, I voted against almost all the new, new developments because of the um, infrastructure issues, etc., that went with them. But one of the things that I have to say did go with them in a lot of the cases, particularly when you look at Weddington and St Nick's Royal Park and all around there, is that there have been new play equipment put in. And we're just about to finish off a, a, a big piece of the jigsaw uh, with Buttermere now that we've got almost all the money in to finish that. And in fact, there are a number of areas um, which haven't seen um, any significant development where there is a virtual desert in terms of play equipment. And myself and Councillor Gutteridge uh, will know that full well in our ward of Whitestone because um, in the 2012 Play and Open Space Strategy, it was acknowledged that uh, Whitestone was bottom of the league table in terms of having play and open spaces for residents to go to. In fact, the only one within the ward of Whitestone physically located in the ward of Whitestone is Crow Hill Rec. And if you actually, and there's a little one um, off Crow Hill, Inchford, Inchford Close. Close. Um, otherwise, if you live, say, the top end of uh, Lutterworth Road, um, the Shakespeare Estates, etc., the nearest actually is quite a distance away at Paul's Land. Um, there are some who have, uh, some of the newer areas are actually quite a lot closer. And in terms of trying to help make things safer, as a council, we have already done an awful lot since taking control. We brought in the new Dome Hawk cameras, or Nomad cameras, as I believe they're called now. Um, in the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, we have actually purchased even more um, Nomad cameras. And there is money set aside within the UK Shared Prosperity Fund for both years two and three. I think one of the years is in the region of £75,000, actually, for funding alongside NABSCOP, which Councillor Golby chairs, to actually introduce um, projects to help reduce uh, violent and antisocial crime. Yeah. And I think that is actually, yet again, a symptom, uh, sorry, a, a sign that this Conservative administration is taking building a safer borough seriously. Um, so I think yet again, it's not all doom and gloom as being painted um, from uh, the, the minority parties. Uh, anyone want to come back? Okay, Councillor Golby. I'm glad you pointed it out. I mean, it, that, that, that conversation there just makes everywhere seem like a no-go area. And I remember when we were at the Borough Plan Review and I was speaking to somebody who was there and it was the day after uh, Councillor Kandaka had been in and they actually said to me, it's a wonder anybody wants to come here with the way he talks about the place. And that is exactly right. And the negativity yeah. is just shining through. But I'd also like to point out that Councillor Kandaka has just complained about uh, the, the, the Borough Plan and in that, we actually address some of these issues with affordable housing SPD, health impact SPD, concept plans, uh, planning for a healthy area, open space and green infrastructure SPD, yep. shopfront advertising and guides SPD, sustainable design and construction SPD, uh, conservation area appraisals and management SPD, the design code for Arbury, which encompasses all of HSG2, and talks about all of those things that you've just yeah. complained about not being present. Now, Arbury, when that's developed, it is going to be a big chunk of, of you know, housing. But the SPD covers all of that. Yeah. Uh, and then the first homes interim policy statement. You can't talk out of one side of your face on one agenda item and then another side of your face on, an, on another agenda item. It's the, the inconsistency is just, you know, People are getting whiplash with it. But if you think that, that my, my communities team are not on the ball with all of this, they are. We've restructured the team. We've restructured the entire team to cope with what we know we have to do. We've got uh, specific housing uh, officers now, specifically for ASB and nothing else. We've got, um, the team has been internally moved, so we've got uh, neighborhood teams that we didn't have before. We, we are focusing on, on, um, on the specialisms and it's working. And we've got, sorry, I can't. 
Oh, yeah, and, and the evictions. Oh, yes, the evictions. And something else that I keep getting publicly kicked for is the fact that we are not putting up with people's bad behaviour in communities. And communities is the key word here. This is not a neighbour-neighbour neighbor issue. This is a community. We've got a lot of communities now who are recognising that there are um, there is power in numbers. So it's not just a neighbour versus neighbour. It's actually communities now standing up and saying, we don't want this in our area. And it's working. It's absolutely working. So, uh, I, I mean... I, if I lived in the area that you represent, that you have just completely dragged down, I'd be very, very annoyed. Can I ask a question? No. Um, <laughs> this is not a conversation. This is not a conversation. Councillor Condacore, you know that at Cabinet, you have the... Actually, it's not written in the Constitution. It's at the Chair's discretion that non-Cabinet members are allowed to speak. This isn't a conversation. It's not a debate. You've had your chance to speak. We don't. We sat and listened to you in silence. It's only fair that you do the same. So, no, Councillor Condacore. Councillor Councillor Condacore, carry on, and I will ask you to leave the chamber. Councillor Golby, please continue. Thank you. He's doing it because he's got his camera in front of him and he'll be recording himself on his own camera. Um, this is... Th we are addressing those issues. Now, the thing is, the, the, the negativity that keeps pouring out is getting noticed by a lot of people, and by, uh, particularly by my teams. They are doing a really tough yeah. job yeah. in really challenging circumstances and, and kicking people when we're trying to actually bring things forward is not helpful yeah. so i don't mind that we've i mean we've been through this thing again where we get things brought up in public meetings and then actually when you talk about it uh, you know approached in an official capacity suddenly the conversation runs dry um we're addressing these things we know these things are an issue that's why we're expanding the team that's why we've restructured and the serious violence duty is part of that in in the um the systemic changes that we are implementing under my uh, portfolio leadership. So I don't care what's gone before, I do care what's coming down the line. And that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm dealing with things, we're, we're horizon scanning and we're setting it up, so for future proofing, we are gonna be there. And trust me, housing associations are top of my list, but I don't need you to kind of lecture from the sidelines on things, I absolutely do not. And I'm gonna leave it there, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Golby. Any other cabinet member? No, in which case we will move to the vote on the recommendations as printed. All those in favour, please show. Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. Um, recommendations from overview and scrutiny panels. There aren't any. We've already been through any other items, but just for completeness, there aren't any, isn't anything else for me to be aware of. Um, in which case, um, the only thing I would like to highlight is that next week is the last week that we have the Knife Angel, um, and we have a bit of a closing ceremony uh, next week, and I would encourage anyone who is uh, available to attend to come down and see it, because I think it has been a truly remarkable um, event that we have had this month, and it has made a world of difference to the town centre, and it has also been very emotionally impactful to a lot of residents um, as well. And again, that's all due to um, Councillor Golby and her team leading on that. So thank you very much. Yeah. Just to point out that the the timing of the uh, closing ceremony has been complained about, but there's not a lot we can do about it because the Knife Angel is actually leaving the borough the day after. So we are we are stuck to those times. We have picked a time that is available for the majority of people who, who want to be involved, who have been involved over the course of the month. Uh, and we've, we've done that um, because we want as many people there as possible. And also, I know it's billed as a candlelight vigil, and I know that it will be daylight, but that's part of the, uh, the closing ceremony through, throughout the Knife Angel, wherever it is. And it just so happens that we are midsummer. Can't help that. Not a lot I can do. And we can't leave it until 11 o'clock at night, I'm afraid. So we're going to have to work with what we've got. But yeah, I didn't invite anybody to come down on the 29th to, 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 to witness the closing ceremony because it has actually had 
quite a big impact on the town. Definitely. Thank you, Councillor Goldby. Uh, and that, therefore, concludes the business of tonight's meeting, and I wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you very much.